Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call tonight's meeting to order. Uh, before I get into the agenda, I'd like to introduce the members of staff and council to those in our audience in council chambers and the viewing audience. At uh, my right, your left, is Mr. Darren Light, our Director of Corporate Services, Carolyn Machada, our Manager of Legislative Services, Mr. Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer. At the council table, Councillor Jack Arnold, Councillor Rosemary Wallace is unable to be here this evening. Councillor Ted Schaefer. I'm Mayor Peter Fassbender. On my left, your right, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Terry James, and Councillor Dave Hall is also away this evening. And at our other staff table, we have Mr. Gerald Minchuk, our Director of Development Services and Economic Development. Uh, we have our assistant, uh, Chief, our Deputy Fire Chief, Bob Scott, and uh, we have Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture, and Community Services. Moving into the agenda, the first item is I need a motion to approve the minutes from March the 4th, moved by Councillor Arnold, seconded by Councillor James. Any errors or omissions? Hearing none, all of those in favor? It is carried. Moving into petitions and delegations, the first delegation is the President of the Langley Chamber of Commerce, N.G. Qualley. <clears throat> and the subject is the reinstatement of the business vote in municipal elections. Uh, you can either sit or stand at the mic, but make sure you work close to it, especially for the viewing audience. Thank you. I think I'll stand because uh, I'm a bit too short even for that table, I think. <laughs> Good evening. It's nice to see everybody here this evening. Mayor Fassbender, members of council, uh, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this evening to discuss the reinstatement of the business vote in the municipal elections in British Columbia. Joining me this evening are representatives of the uh, chamber board and um, our executive director, Lynn Whitehouse. In partnership with our colleagues from across the province, the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce has been pursuing for some time, um, uh, along with representatives of the Fraser Valley Chambers of Commerce, will be making the same request to their mayor and council within the next couple of weeks. In British Columbia, businesses pay a significant portion of municipal property taxes. However, businesses don't have the right to vote in the municipal election process. Businesses have become the silent taxpayer. Essentially, it's taxation without representation. This is further emphasized as businesses typically pay a much higher rate than taxes paid by the residents. Business has an important role to play in the health and vitality of the communities in which they're located. They provide accessible goods and services locally and employment for our residents. Businesses also accept a large portion of social responsibility to provide vital financing and resources for area nonprofit organizations that form the essence of our community. From youth sport organizations and programs to medical research and support services, food and shelter for the disadvantaged. It's also worthy to note that although businesses pay a significantly higher tax rate, they're not provided with the same level of service that the residents, such as garbage, that the residents enjoy, such as garbage collection and recycling, nor do they utilize the schools or recreational facilities. We believe that the business owners are a voice that should be heard in our municipal elections. These owners are investing in our communities through their businesses, they employ our citizens, support the social causes, and donate their time to improve the livability and appeal of our communities. They deserve the right to have input when deciding the representatives who make the laws and policies to determine how the city functions and how we all live together. These municipal government decisions affect both the residents and the businesses. Previously, it was felt that verifying voter eligibility was too challenging and therefore resulted in low business participation at the, at the polls. We're certain that these challenges can easily, easily be overcome utilizing modern technology. The Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce has a membership of 1,100 area businesses. A recent survey of those businesses determined that 92% of the res respondents felt that reinstatement of the business vote was an important issue that, that needed to be pursued. 
The Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce appreciates the support of Mayor and Council in the past, and we respectfully request your, res your support once again to have the reinstatement of the business vote included on the agenda for debate at the 2013 LMLGA Convention and advancement to the UBCM Convention. Following is a draft of, of, uh, of the resolution for your consideration. The draft is called Restoration of the Business Vote. Whereas businesses are a viable part of the foundation of community prosperity, there is a necessity that the interest of this critical element of a vibrant community be restored to the democratic municipal election process by restoring the business vote. And whereas many business owners live outside their jurisdiction and cannot be part of the election process or vote in a referendum which may impact their business directly. This gives them no vote in a community in which they are a critical funder of essential services through their contribution to property tax and licensed revenue that allow local government to provide critical services. This, representation, this represents taxation without representation. Therefore, be it resolved that the Union of BC Municipalities work with the Province of British Columbia and the BC Chamber of Commerce to reinstate a business voting category so that businesses can exercise their democratic right to vote and participate in the electoral process in our communities. On behalf of the Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce and our 1,100 members, I thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this evening. Uh, we would certainly appreciate and value the cooperation of Council in this effort. Thank you very much. Um, any comments or questions from members of Council? Councillor Martin. Thank you. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Angie. It's been since 1990 was the last time the businesses were able to vote. But reading over your material that you sent us, I, I just want to clarify and sort of ask what you mean. In, in one of your paragraphs you, you have here, the Chamber believes that the fact that BC would be unique in introducing the business vote is directly related to the fact that we, we are unique in respect to the level of property tax levied on business and the unfettered power local government has over setting property tax with no recourse for appeal. So if you had the business vote, what would your recourse for appeal be? Well, it wouldn't necessarily be a recourse for appeal. We would just have simply have a voice in um, how the, that taxation is structured. So right now, it's, it's happening to us. We aren't part of the process. And by ch changing this so that businesses can be part of the process, I think um, opens dialogue for everybody to do a better job and, and, and bring better things to the community. So by being part of the process, you mean in us, us as a council setting like a tax rate? Well, you do that now. Yeah, I know we do. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, what's the question? Well, the question, I mean, it, it sounds to me, you, you say with no recourse for appeal, and, and you know, without sounding <laughs> that we have all this power that says that we have, um, you know, we, we set a tax rate, and, I mean, understandably, every time we do that, the public is upset because they don't want tax increases, and we understand that. Right. Um, but there, I guess the no recourse for appeal is sort of what I'm, I'm a little confused about, because nobody has any recourse for appeal on, on property taxes. You're, you're right, the, um, but uh, they at least have a voice that, that will be heard. Right now, there's no opportunity for, for business voice to be heard. I think business doesn't begrudge paying the taxes. Right. Um, I mean, I own a small business here in Langley. I don't begrudge paying the taxes. Right. But I think there's a lot of opportunity for the, the city, the councillors, the mayors to come back to business for feedback on maybe a better way to use some of those resources. And I, you know, I, I will say about this council, I think, you know, when, when we're discussing, um, obviously the budget and, and the tax increases and stuff like that, everybody that sits at this table is very cognizant of, of the business. And, you know, there is a ratio uh, between business and, and residential. Yes. And I believe Langley City, and I could be corrected, is one of the lowest ratios in Metro Vancouver. 
So, you know, it's not like we certainly don't think about the businesses because we do. They're in a very, very important part of our community, yes. and, and we certainly all understand that. So, with with all due respect, Councillor Martin, this this isn't about the city of Langley. This is about what goes oh, no, on I in the whole that. province. I, I understand that. And we while I will agree with you that yes, the the um, the ratio in the city of Langley is by far and away more reasonable than in other municipalities. It's a provincial issue, not just a Langley issue. No, I, I understand that, and, and, I, and I understand this is more the, this is bigger issue than just the city of Langley. What I'm trying to address is, is some of the comments that are made here, and, and that, you know, it, it, it's like the other, the other comment here is, is that um, with increasing disparity between business taxes and residential taxes, and the significant additional powers granted to municipalities through the community charter, businesses are ever more cognizant of the challenge many local governments present to their ability to grow their business. And I understand what you're saying there. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm, I, we are dealing with Langley City tonight. You're, you're addressing yes. Langley City Council. So I'm just telling you how Langley City Council deals or feels about the businesses in our community. And um, you know, we certainly understand whether you're taxed municipally, provincially, federally, and then through Metro Vancouver, it, it all it affects everybody. Yes. And, and I mean, I've heard talk shows recently where, where people are saying there's more underground economy because of the taxes. And, and I, I certainly understand that. I had my own business prior to being on council, so I know. So I don't disagree with, with what you're saying. Um, I don't know whether, I think you, you did make a presentation to Township Council and, and they left it with the staff report or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Can you, the staff report? It was referred back to staff. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make that motion that we refer this back to staff. Which would be the appropriate um, thing. Um, uh, uh, before we do that, uh, Councillor James, you had your hand up. I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a comment and a question. Um, so I don't disagree with the businesses having a vote at all. I've been fairly clear on that from the beginning. I just have no idea how it would be implemented. But my question is, am I recalling correctly that the question at the all candidates meeting was asked about of the candidates if they um, would support the business vote? It was. And do you recall what the consensus was? Uh, off the top of my head, I'm sorry. The, con the consensus was favorable to supporting the, the resolution, but um, I'd have to defer to Lynn for exact numbers. Lynn, do you happen to recall the numbers? In favor, yeah. In favor. So the general consensus, Councillor James, was that everybody was, not everybody, 90% were in favor of, rest, of restoring the business vote. That's what I recalled too, thank you. Thank you. You're aware of the history that Langley City Council actually sent a resolution to LMLGA. It went forward along with a, a few other ones. Yes. And I say a few because it was a few. Um, it was rejected by UBCM. It's been rejected by the provincial government. It's been rejected by FCM as a membership body. Uh, and I'm talking majority votes in each one of those cases. Um, so, you know, there has been a lot of debate over the years about this. And, and I think the issue is not one of whether or not businesses should have a voice because I think, as Councillor Martin has said, this council has gone on record to work very hard to understand the needs and the priorities and the issues that business face, at least in our community. Yes. Um, and we work hard to work with business. That's one of the reasons that, you know, the mayor has chosen to sit on the Downtown Business Improvement Association as, as the liaison. And, and, you know, we recognize the realities. We've worked hard to keep our ratio the lowest in Metro, and it is still the lowest. Um, and there's always that challenge in terms of how do you effectively provide the kind of voice that you're talking about. And that's the arguments that the province of British Columbia and every other jurisdiction across the country mm -hmm. has been grappling with. Um, I guess my question for you, Angie, is um, are the other chambers throughout the province making the same presentation to all of their local governments uh, for the other local government associations? outside of just the LMLGA? The, um, this uh, restoration of the business vote, this has been presented, is 
being presented at the BC Chambers AGM at the end of May. Uh, right now, there's delegations at council from um, Abbotsford, Port Moody, or sorry, Coquitlam, um, uh, May, uh, Mission, Maple Ridge. There, our whole region is taking. So the LMLGA region is taking a proactive stance on this. That's right. It hasn't gone out beyond that yet, um, but it will once it's. Um, it's re-entered into the BC Chamber uh, scope of work. And what about nationally? Is um, is your national organization championing this with FCM as well? Not yet, Mayor Fassbender. I need some more time in my day. No, I, I understand the challenge. I'm not trying to minimize it. Yeah. And I have gone on record uh, as a candidate for elections and subsequently that I support coming up with a way to make this practical and implementable that makes sense, mm -hmm. that also respects one of the biggest arguments is one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. And that is where the challenge comes in, or that is the argument that has been used on the counter side in a number of debates that I've heard. And I understand that. And I don't think it's going to be easy to look at how you implement that, what the criteria are, and how that, that is handled. Because as you know, in, in our city, for example, every property owner who owns business properties has a vote. And they can have more than one vote. They may live in another jurisdiction, but if they own property in ours, they are eligible for a vote. So there are implications to all of that that I think you know, is one of the arguments that you hear. So, um, uh, Councillor Martin, unless there are any other comments or questions from members of council, if you wanted to make a motion that this go back to staff to bring back a report to council, I'm happy to entertain that. I, I will do that. I, I, if I may, if I may, Mr. Mayor, it's Turn on your microphone. Looks like the executive director of the chamber might want to say something. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. It's always okay to be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There was a couple of questions that came up that I think I can maybe respond to a little bit. Yes, this issue has come up before UBCM and the Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Um, I understand that at the last convention, it actually didn't manage to make it onto the agenda. Um, and I also do know that thank you, the City of Langley, that you were willing to go there and to, to debate the issue. Um, since that uh, convention, um, there was a proposal that was done in partnership with the BC Chamber of Commerce, the BC Business Council, and the Canadian Federation of Independent Business in cooperation with the provincial government to further explore and look at ways that this could be implemented. Um, you know, if you think about our rental properties in our city, a, an apartment complex is owned by a property owner and the residences in that building also have a vote. And we are saying that it's time to perhaps consider the same for the business community in the same way who are paying tax at a different rate. So I don't know if that helps at all. Well, I think the only help there is what staff is going to be able to do is to see where is that work at this time because the reason it didn't make it on the agenda the last time was that UBCM determined that it had been dealt with and that a resolution had been passed and there was no new information that would warrant it coming back on. Whether or not you agree with that position, that was the position, <laughs> I, I don't expect you would, uh, but that was the position that was taken at the time and it is the resolutions committee at UBCM that makes that or LMLGA. However, I think what we can do is to find out where is the province at this stage. We're at a time where I think representation at this time to uh, various uh, people seeking uh, elected office should be made by the chamber throughout the province because if it's going to change, it's going to take provincial legislation to change it, not local legislation, but provincial and a very clear understanding of well, how that would be implemented and what the implications were. Yeah. We have, if I may, we have had conversations at that provincial level, um, but 
with the current state of the um, of the union, it's probably a little more difficult right now to get a commitment from that. But um, we're, if you don't keep asking, you, you'll just end up where totally. you've always been. So we're going to keep asking and we're going to keep you know, pushing this forward and trying to get it back on the agenda because it is important to us. And, um, you know, <clears throat> recognizing again that the disparity in Langley City certainly isn't as great as it is in other parts of the province. Somebody's got to champion this. And, you know, we, we are very fortunate as a chamber to have such a great relationship with the city. And, I mean, just look at the success that came from the um, mobile business license. So um, if somebody's got to champion this. So. We're, we appreciate the relationship with the city. So I think that said, I don't have to make my speech tomorrow night because we sort of covered it all. <laughs> Just kidding. No. <laughs> Councilor Martin, uh, you're making the motion that this would be referred to staff for a further report on the status currently with the province um, and what steps might be taken? Yes, that's fine. If I could just clarify one thing. Um, depending on what comes from the staff report, if we decide to take this to the LMLGA. The deadline. The deadline, because uh, it's not very far away, the, the LMLGA conference. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure what that is for, for putting in resolutions at this point. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Uh, the process is generally it goes to LMLGA first, yeah. and yeah. then it's dealt with there and then taken. Uh, but communities can send in resolutions to UBCM yeah. on their own, as yeah. we've done in the past. So whatever the window is, but I think we need to have a clear understanding of where yeah. things are at, because otherwise we would be just going around in circles to no productive end. And I think what you want is to see some, some movement. And, and I would just encourage the chamber to have a strong provincial position, because as I said, it's not going to happen unless there's provincial legislation. You can have all the support you want in, in word, but indeed it's going to have to come down to a change provincially and maybe even federally, quite honestly, because it's a huge issue right across the country. It is. Okay, with that said, uh, any other comments or questions before I call the question on the motion to refer it to staff? Seeing none, all of those in favor? It is carried. Thank you for that. And now I'm going to call Thank the second you. delegation, which is Angie Qualley, who is here on behalf of the Langley Community Farmers Market. Yes. Different hat. Um, Thank you very much, Mayor Fassbender, Councillor Staff. It's, um, it's nice to be here tonight representing the uh, uh, Langley Community Farmers Market. Um, I'm here um, with um, my co-chair of the market, Susan Davidson. She's a farmer here in Langley, and Benedict Canal. He's our uh, farmer's market manager. And um, we're here to say thank you. Um, Councillor James was at our AGM last week, and um, really we were just giving a status report on, on uh, the market and how it's performing and where it's come from and, and where we're going. Um, this, the market wouldn't exist without... Um, some support from our stakeholders here in the community from um, our partners at Kwantling University, the city, the township, and uh, we're simply here tonight to say thank you for the ongoing support. Um, we received a check recently from the city of Langley for, for $5,000 um, through the community grants application, and with that money we'll be upgrading our equipment and our infrastructure um, to, to improve the market. Um, the market, for those of you who haven't been, and I am hoping everybody has been, takes place on Wednesdays at Kwantlen University in the courtyard. Um, last year, Kwantlen, uh, because of the um, uh, changes to the campus itself, they moved us to the inside courtyard um, and out of the parking lot. So we faced some considerable challenges with visibility and, and signage and, and we had we had a bit of a struggle. Our vendors struggled to get their um, their wares onto the um, onto the courtyard property where they could actually sell them. So this year we're planning to upgrade our infrastructure and buy carts and do a whole bunch of things that we we really couldn't do without the support of Langley City. Um, our objective at the farmers market um, is to keep the keep the money here and and feed our farmers, the people that produce our food in my opinion, have the most important job in the world. If they don't continue to grow our food, we wake up one day and have only 
<laughs> only McDonald's to eat at, and I don't want to wake up one day and not have any <laughs> choices. So it's important to me and to the other people in the farmers market that um, that we can provide our farmers with an opportunity to make a living. Last year, our total total vendor sales at the Langley Farmers Market was almost two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Average weekly sales of almost eleven thousand dollars. That's money that's staying in our community and helping to grow our farms and make our food system uh, sustainable. Uh, last year we had 612 vendor booth days, so that's total number of vendors over the entire season with an average of 31, 31 vendors each week. We saw almost 18,000 people attend the Langley Community Farmers Market last year, an increase of almost 20%. Um, average weekly attendance was 900 people. So if you can imagine just several hours at the Kwantlen campus, 900 to 1,000 people, um, it's a lot of community participating in the market, and that's really what's important to us. Um, we changed locations last year, as I said, and while it presented some challenges, it also presented some opportunities. We were able to provide more access to electricity and things like that for our vendors. So um, we're pleased to, to advise um, the city that we have a five-year rolling uh, memor memorandum of understanding with the university. They're, they um, wholeheartedly welcome us back onto the campus, and they've been um, a fantastic partner uh, for the community farmers market. Uh, this year, uh, next Monday, in fact, uh, we're hosting our very first uh, fundraiser. It's a long table dinner at the Fat Cow and Oyster Bar, and I believe Mayor Fassbender, you are joining us for dinner, and Councillor James, I think. Um, and so we're hoping to raise eight or ten thousand um, dollars at that event as well. So. I guess our report is to say thank you, but also to let you know that we're working really hard to be sustainable, to have a market that has a little bit of money in the bank that doesn't have to keep going out to, to scrape for every single nickel. It's difficult for farmers markets in, in, in the province to get to a place where, where they're sustainable, but the Langley farmers market is very healthy and uh, it's doing very well and it's very well supported by, by our community. So um, thank you for your ongoing support and we will look forward to seeing you at the market this summer when it starts on May 3rd? May 22nd. Thank you very much. And before I close, I'd also just like to thank the city for their contribution of staff time. Carolyn Machada joined our board last year. Um, she's now our market treasurer, and so without your contribution in kind of, of um, some of Carolyn's time, um, we wouldn't be in the position we're in either. So I'd like to thank you for that. She's a great volunteer. She is a great volunteer. Um, and finally, the um, uh, we spent a lot of time this winter working with Gary Vlieg um, and, and his team to create some permanent signage around the city and so the farmers market has actually purchased that signage now um, it's actually being made as we speak and should be installed in the next couple of weeks so that will help with our visibility challenges in the in the coming season so Great. thank you very much questions or comments Councillor James thank you mr. mayor so um, I can remember sitting around five years ago, <laughs> five years ago, yeah. when people were first talking about having a farmer's market in the city of Langley. Kim was there. There was a, a whole host of people. Um, and someone made a comment that uh, the success of a farmer's market is, is indicated within the first five years, and you're either mm -hmm. sinking or swimming. I've been fortunate enough to be able to attend all the AGMs, and I see absolutely no indication that you're doing anything but increasing um, the activity there and the, you know how many people are coming and the awareness and everything. Um, I just wanted to say thank you because uh, in a community the size of ours, I, it's like I said at the AGM, I actually told Angie that it's almost a pain the number of phone calls I start getting in January mm -hmm. about people asking me about the farmer's market and where it is, and well, not where it is, but when it starts and everything. So thank you for bringing an active and organized um, farmer's market to our community. And thank you to all the people who participate on the board. I've met them all, and they're an extremely strong board. I'm really looking forward to working with Benedict. And... Um, yeah, I just want to congratulate all of you. It's a very, it's it's awesome to watch. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor James. It uh, takes a village, as they say, and uh, Langley has certainly embraced their market. And like I said earlier, there is a lot of community in the market. 
Well, I wanted to, to add my congratulations for what I think is a tremendous addition, but I think it goes beyond just the market, as you said. And, you know, the city has been working with Kwantlen Polytechnic and their horticulture and uh, their research group to look at other ways of uh, community gardens and education of young people about growing food, even in small quantities on your balcony, if uh, that's mm -hmm. all you have. And I think it's that whole message of sustainability and the ability for us to look at food supply even in our own individual homes. And so we'll continue as a community, I think, to look at that. We have talked with Kwantlen about a demonstration project of a much larger scale community garden, and uh, it's taken time and it, we're not done yet, but those are the kind of things. But I think the farmer's market is a real example. And I do want to say also the farm to school uh, program that's done out in Aldergrove with the farmers and the school students who've built community gardens on their school site, they actually grow it and then they take it into the cafeteria and they eat it, mm -hmm. to me is what is really needed to the long term to change a psychology that food comes from a supermarket only. It's what's behind that. And I, I think supermarkets are wonderful. Uh, we're blessed to have as many as we do, but I think that that whole understanding of the food chain is so important. And um, and I think the market helps for people to come into contact with local growers and producers and people that are making a difference and want to see that expanded. I think that's a very positive thing. Puts a face on your food when it really you know does. who's growing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we'll continue to do what we can. We're not a large agricultural community. <laughs> Um, as the city of Langley, but I think we have some innovative ideas of what we can even do to help with that. And we've got community gardens already, and um, you know, as we see the opportunity to expand or to look at something more innovative, uh, I think this council is more than willing to do that, and, and that's what it's all about. So thank well, you. Last week at our AGM, um, there was a gentleman who's um, with the sustainability Institute for Horticulture, and I've totally butchered the name, but his name is Kent Mullinex, and he gave the keynote address at our um, AGM last week. And if there's an opportunity for council to engage with him, um, the story he told at our AGM was nothing short of unbelievable. So um, it's important, food security in our community. And uh, the farmer's market, as much as it puts people in touch with their, their food producers, it also has an provides an opportunity for education, for kids to understand that the food doesn't always come in a plastic bag, but that somebody's actually growing it. Yeah. Yep. Great. If I may, before we close, Mayor Fassbender, Susan brought some... Um, some greens. <laughs> she likes to show off. She grows the best greens in the province. And um, Susan is a farmer from Glorious Organics here in Langley. And um, she's brought some of her world famous salad mix for everybody. Unfortunately, it is in a bag. However, okay. it is ready for you to eat, and it's an expression of appreciation. The farmer's market here in Langley has been. I thought it was my retirement project, but I don't think it's maybe going to be that for a long time yet to come. So this is just a sneak peek of what we'll have available starting the 22nd of May. Fabulous. There's enough for the staff and council if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor Fassbender, I know Charlene knows what to do with those. <laughs> I'm teasing. And Charlene is a great customer of the farmer's market. Yeah, and who, you're suggesting I don't know how to take <laughs> this and put it in a bowl? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having us here tonight. Well, great, great, great organization. Thank you for all of the effort. Okay, that's the end of our delegations. We'll move into the rest of the agenda. The first is the Advisory Planning Commission minutes of March the 13th. Councillor Arnold, is there anything you uh, wish to speak to on those? Uh, well, we just had the one item, uh, and uh, we'll uh, talk about that later on in the meeting, but that was uh, a project that uh, Councillor Schaefer and I both went and took a look at one that's running and, and existing and how they work and so on. Uh, earlier than that, and then uh, 
we were both at the uh, the meeting as well uh, on Wednesday. So, we we'll, if anyone has any questions, uh, glad to answer them. I don't see any, so we'll move on from there. There are no other uh, committee minutes. We'll move right into the mayor's report. The next televised meeting will be Monday, April the 8th. And the next meeting after that will be Monday, April the 22nd. And the next item is Metro Vancouver. And I see the board and brief is in our agenda. Councillor Martin, is there anything you want to add to the Thank report? Thank you. Uh, n no, uh, it is uh, it is there. It's uh, almost a month old, though. Um, they're coming few and far far between. Uh, but if there are any questions, I'll see if I can remember what happened. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any questions for Councillor Martin? Seeing none. Moving on from there, library happenings. Councillor Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, these are the events happening here in the Langley City Library. Uh, the first one is Bobby and the Amazing Flea Market, Wednesday, March 20th, from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30. And this is uh, for kids, engaging stories, and kids will learn how to stay safe if they become lost or separated from their parents or caregivers. That's March 20th. Pinch Pot Clay, Monday, March 25th, 10.30 till 11.30. Come to the library and learn the basic techniques of clay building and create little clay pots. And um, next one, monthly art critiques, seven till nine. Uh, are you developing your talents as an artist? Teen Writers Group, Monday, March 25th, 7.30 till uh, 8.45. It's for homeschoolers age 13 to, eight, 13 to 18 who are using the one-year adventure novel curriculum. Tuesday, March 26th, 1.30 till 2.30, Joseph the Magician. Celebrate spring break with magic at the library. Easter story time and egg hunt on Wednesday, March 27th, 11 till 11.45 for a special Easter story time, followed by an egg hunt. And Cyber Day, Saturday, March, er, Saturday, March, <laughs> April 6th, this program will teach kids 5 till 7 about safe online behavior and please contact the Langley City Library if you're interested in partaking in these events. And most of this here is for the spring break that is now happening for the children. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any questions for Councillor Schaefer? Seeing none, moving on from there. There are no administrative reports this evening. We'll move right into bylaws. I need a motion for first and second reading of a bylaw to amend the City of Langley zoning bylaw to add a new comprehensive development zone to rezone the property located at 20510 Langley Bypass. Moved by Councillor Arnold, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Uh, Mr. Minchuk, uh, is Mr. or Mr. Chung, is Mr. Minchuk going to give us some update on this? Normally, we defer any discussion to the public hearing. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions Thank relating you. to the CV project. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, as Councillor Arnold alluded to, uh, both uh, Councillor Arnold and Councillor Shaver had an opportunity to tour the existing North Langley facility on 88th and 200th Street to get a bird's eye view of what's in store for the uh, bypass site. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Martin? Thank you. I was just uh, confused about one uh, thing under the engineering requirements, and that was uh, number four, garbage and recycling organics collection enclosures shall be designed to meet Metro Vancouver's multifamily and commercial building recycling space. Um, I wasn't aware there was even, there, there was a multifamily and commercial recycling thing in Metro Vancouver for multifamily, certainly. Mr. Chen. Council Martin through Mayor Fassbender. There was a new regulation recently passed by Metro Vancouver on the new multifamily recycling specification for recycling bins, so we're trying to implement that as uh, part well, of Well, I our think what I, what, I, what I was confused about was the organics part because that is not come into law until 2015, does it not, for, for multifamily? That's correct. But uh, as part of the process, um, we're giving advice to the 
the um, developing developers to provide the, the venue for organic recycling. To be ready. Yeah, to be ready for. So, and, and that's, that's really the part that, that did confuse me. Um, so aside from this, if, if I may, if, if we do get some multifamily, we'll, we'll be suggesting that they provide for this in, in the future. Yeah, okay. That's correct. That's where I was confused because I, I, th I, I mean, I knew it didn't come into law until 2015. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all of those in favor? Opposed if any, the motion is carried. Uh, we have no motions or notices of motion. We'll move right into correspondence. Uh, March is Community Social Services Awareness Month. And um, we've been asked to uh, do a proclamation, but we make mention of the fact that uh, we support um, the provincial reinvestment in the community social services sector. And the object of the month is to uh, bring that into public attention. And there was a, a fair amount of information that was provided to us that all of council, uh, and it is available as part of the agenda. Then moving on from there, the BC Nurses, or the BC Nature Federation of BC Naturalists, um, they are asking for creation of cat licensing bylaws. And I know this has been discussed in a number of venues. Um, and I don't know if there is any desire on any member of council to ask for a staff report. We did uh, discuss this as a, at a previous meeting not long ago. Um, and unless there is, uh, that is for information. Seeing no one stepping up, uh, is there any unfinished business? Seeing none, uh, is there any new business? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Moved by Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. All of those in favor? The motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.